Hi there. In my home workshop, I have a small milling machine that I purchased a number of years ago. Since completing a CNC conversion, I've been keen on building a fourth axis for it. So in this video, I'll show how I've gone about building this relatively low cost, but rather functional fourth axis. I made the body of this fourth axis design from 2017A aluminium plate of various thicknesses. The chuck back plate is made from XC45 carbon steel. A low profile front mounted 80mm 4 jaw chuck is used in this design. I've chosen a 30 watt harmonic drive based digital servo for this project. The important features here are an output resolution of 0.088 degrees. Being harmonic drive based, they exhibit almost zero backlash. I've chosen a model that has its output horn supported by a cross roller bearing, which is ideal for the large axial and radial loads that a fourth axis might be subject to. These servers have a stepper control mode that allows direct connection to a CNC controller, so no additional drivers or control electronics are required. The design itself is quite simple. The height of the center line above the milling machine table is a compromise. These small milling machines have limited z-axis travel, so I've made the center line 54.5 mm above the table. The jaws of the four-jaw chuck are beyond the front of the base plate, so the effective swing should be sufficient for most machining tasks on this milling machine. There are four plates in total, and all are secured with either M5 or M6 bolts. The slots milled on the base plate are aligned with the slots on the milling machine table to allow the fourth axis to be bolted directly to the table. Alternatively, there is enough of the sides of the base plate exposed to allow the fourth axis to be clamped parallel to the Y axis. The front mounted chuck mounts onto the back plate using four M6 bolts supplied with the chuck. And finally, the top and back panels are 3D printed. They are in no way structural and are there only to protect the servo. The fabrication of the fourth axis was quite straightforward. All of the plates were cut on the small bandsaw. On this milling machine, the X and Y axes are not quite perpendicular. However, we need to ensure that all of the plates are machined as square as possible. To achieve this, I clamped a precision 3-2-1 block and dialed it in along the X axis. Each plate was then mounted up against the 3-2-1 block before performing the side milling operations along the x-axis. After squaring each plate to size and facing both sides of the chuck face plate on the lathe, each plate was mounted on an aluminium spacer, then aligned along the x-axis and clamped to the bed of the milling machine. Hole patterns were then drilled and features milled. After the hole patterns were drilled, the front plate was mounted front side out in a four jaw chuck on the mini lathe. The plate was then dialed in using the center hole as a reference. A circular cutout was then bored. I have an automated boring setup on the mini lathe with an application that allows the dimensions to be specified. This was a very useful project that saves a great deal of time. The front plate was then mounted back side out before boring the back side recess. Unfortunately, I didn't record footage of the machining of the back plate on the lathe. However, here's an explanation of how I went about it. The back plate was mounted back side out in the four jaw chuck and dialed in using the center hole. The center hole was then lightly bored to create a better reference surface. The OD of the output horn of the servo is a reference surface. So the ID of the recess is turned to the exact dimensions of the servo horn's OD. The black plate was then mounted front side out in the four jaw chuck. The OD of the tenon was then machined to the exact ID of the register of the chuck for the fourth axis. So the back side recess and the front side tenon are critical dimensions and their respective axes must be in alignment. This is especially important if a self centering chuck is being used. With all of the machining complete, the only thing left to do was to tap some holes. The servo was then installed into the recess at the back side of the front plate. The chuck back plate was then bolted to the servo's horn. Finally, the chuck was bolted to the back plate using the four M6 bolts supplied with the chuck. 
The next task that we come to is the configuration of the servo. The Mercury Servo Manager application should be installed. This application can be downloaded from the Robot Articulation website and is available for Linux and Windows. We then need to connect the servo to a PC. For this we need a small device called the USB to Mercury that connects the servo to a USB port. The USB to Mercury device should be connected in the following way. When the servo has been correctly wired and powered up, the Mercury Servo Manager application should be run. The first step is to select the correct serial port and baud rate. Click on the settings icon, then select the serial port. On a Linux machine, the USB port connected to the USB to Mercury device should appear as TTYACM0 in the serial port drop-down. Then select the baud rate. The default baud rate for Mercury servos is 1 megabits per second. Next, select the correct server address. The default address is 1. Now click on the connect icon. If no connection is established, the baud rate or servo address may have been previously changed from the default. If so, click on the search icon. Using the same serial port, perform a scan over a selected range of baud rates and server addresses. The servo should be identified in the devices panel on the right. So with the connection to the servo established, we can now configure the servo. The center group box contains non-volatile parameters. These parameters persist until such time as the user makes further changes to them. By contrast, the right-hand side group box contains volatile parameters. These parameters are lost when the servo is powered down. For this fourth axis, all that needs to be done is for the operating mode to be changed to stepper mode. So click on the edit button at the base of the center group box. Then select stepper from the operating mode combo box dropdown. As a result of the change state, the edit button text changes to apply. The limit values can be changed as required. These limits are there to protect the servo. The apply button can be pressed to persist the changes. The next step is to configure the A axis of the CNC controller. The first parameter that we need to configure is the steps per degree. A value of 10 should be entered. This equates to 0.1 degree per step, which is near the resolution limit of the servo's position encoder. The velocity limit unit is in degrees per minute. I've been quite conservative with this setting and set it to 1200 degrees per minute. This equates to 20 degrees per second. The acceleration setting should be set sufficiently low to allow optimal trajectory calculation. I've set the value at 300 degrees per minute squared. The step lower active setting should be set to zero to set the pulse output to active low. Finally, the direction low active parameter should be set based on the way the fourth axis is mounted on the milling machine table. With this value set to one, the right hand rule applies when the fourth axis faces in a positive X or Y direction that is a counterclockwise rotation from a positive A input. With the configuration of the CNC controller complete, we can now connect the fourth axis. The following diagram illustrates how the fourth axis should be connected to the CNC controller and power supply. The fourth axis was then mounted on the milling machine table parallel with the X axis and facing in a positive X direction. It was then dialed in along the X axis. As a first test, I decided to machine a hex on the end of a round steel bar. The base version of Fusion 360 doesn't seem to offer support for a fourth axis, so I generated the toolpath for a single face of the hex. I then edited the G-code file manually, repeating the generated toolpath six times and inserting a 60 degree G1 linear movement of the A axis between each face. So here's the footage of the machining of the hex compressed to about 30 seconds. So here's the machine text. 
there are some scuff marks on the surface, although I don't feel any irregularities on the surfaces. Dimensionally, it looks excellent and fits a 17mm spanner perfectly. In conclusion, I'm very pleased with the way this fourth axis has turned out. It's very rigid indeed, with no discernible radial or axial movement of the chuck, and no detectable backlash. I've published the step files of the design on GrabCAD. The links can be found below this video. So, thanks for watching.